Greetings in Jesus' wonderful and blessed name. A sincere welcome to my podcast, Always on Bible with Glenda Johns. You have been so faithful to subscribe and like, and I hope sharing this opportunity to learn. I am Glenda Johns, faithfully teaching this series, A Fresh Look at Revelation Chronologically. We are now approaching the halfway mark through this series. This episode 12, called The Blowing of the Seventh Trumpet, also marks the exact half of the seven-year tribulation. At this point in tribulation, there are seven things that will occur as the angel begins to blow his seventh trumpet. These seven events are, number one, the killing of the two witnesses, the Jerusalem earthquake, number three, the resurrection and chapter and rapture of all the righteous, both dead and alive, and number four, the desecration of the temple, Number five, the rescue of the Jerusalem Jews. Number six, the coronation of Jesus Christ. And finally, the seventh trumpet finalized. Let's take a closer look at each event. Number one, the killing of the two witnesses. We are now in the 11th chapter of Revelation. The two witnesses have been prophesying in Jerusalem since the very onset of tribulation. Those who have attempted to kill them were destroyed by fire coming from their mouths. The angel is relating this to John as opposed to showing him a vision. John does not see this event for it doesn't seem fit that he would see himself in this vision. When the, wit- when the messages of the witnesses is complete, and only after the Antichrist is possessed of Satan, does the Antichrist have the ability to kill these two witnesses. When which he does, evoking throughout the world a celebration comparable only to Christmas. It is all caught on television, and the people are delighted because these two strange prophets spoke nothing good about their amazing leader. Number two, the Jerusalem earthquake. As people throughout the world are rejoicing and even exchanging gifts in their celebration, almost immediately after the Antichrist kills the two witnesses, the city of Jerusalem suffers a terrible earthquake. It seems that God is showing his displeasure at their slaying of his two anointed witnesses. This devastating earthquake kills 7,000 people and destroys one-tenth of the city of Jerusalem. The scripture describing this adds the remnant were terrified but gave God the glory for sparing their lives. This remnant are the Jews serving in the temple at the time. They have rejected Christ as their Messiah in favor of the Antichrist. However, they still believe in God, the Creator, who reigns supreme in supreme control over nature. This earthquake is the judgment part of the blowing of the seventh trumpet. And these Jerusalem Jews are giving thanks to God and glory to him that they have survived. Number three, the mid-tribulation resurrections and rapture. The celebrations of the deaths of the two witnesses last for three and a half days when as the cameras are focused on the two bodies lying dead in the street, they suddenly stand to their feet. The people watching it all on television cry. 
Is this some trick photography? Is this for real? But the reporters remain mute in amazement as they witness the two witnesses heed a call from above, come up here, and begin to rise until finally disappearing into the clouds. Upon their disappearance, the reporter's only comment is, Wow, good riddance. They are finally silenced. The shout from heaven was probably heard only by the two witnesses. This is the second time that Jesus cries this command. While everyone's eyes are on the two witnesses, this call is no doubt heard by all the righteous, both living and dead, to be resurrected into spiritual bodies and be gathered together in heaven. This is the constitution of another rapture, not unlike that of the church that occurred only a little over three and a half years ago. The only other time that Jesus cried, come up here. The scripture supporting this rapture is found in only one verse, Revelation eleven eighteen, probably one of the most important verses in Revelation. I will read it in the King James Version. As I do, count the number of times the word time appears or is suggested in this verse. And the nations were angry, and your wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and the time that you should give reward unto your servants, the prophets, and the time to judge and reward the saints, and the time to rapture them that fear your name, small and great, and you should destroy them which destroy the earth. These four times are listed freeing God up to destroy them which destroy the earth, nor or now to free him up to turn his attention onto the vengeance that he will now cast upon Satan and his followers during the upcoming wrath of God or the twelve bold judgments. These four times have been have arrived for resurrections and rewards for the righteous, dead and alive. One, a time to judge the dead. Now that would be the righteous Gentiles from Adam to Abraham. It was the time to reward the Jewish prophets, the righteous Jews from Abraham to the blowing of the seventh trumpet who have died, except, of course, those Jews already in heaven who were in the church. Number three, the time to reward the saints. That would be all the saved Gentiles from Abraham to the day of Pentecost who have died. And lastly, the time to reward those who fear the name of Jesus. Because fear is present tense, it would mean all the righteous ones still alive at the blowing of the seventh trumpet, including the 144,000 and their converts. There are definitely four groups mentioned in this verse. A resurrection is a judgment, for when the church is raptured, it is a judgment determining who is really saved and who is not. It is significant that these resurrections occur when the angel begins to sound the tr seventh trumpet. That's found in Revelation 11:15. However, the closing signature of God will not happen, indicating the close of the seventh trumpet until Revelation 11:19 after all these events have occurred. Go figure. We can now conclude that there remains not one righteous individual left on earth after this resurrection event. Everyone remaining alive on earth is unsaved and lost. 
Included in these four groups who are resurrected are two other groups, but we will learn about those in our next meeting in which we will have more information on this seventh trumpet. For this in concludes our episode. This episode. Be sure to subscribe and give me a like. And don't forget to share this podcast, A Fresh Look at Revelation Chronologically with Glenda Johns. See you next time.